Today we are going to talk about trash stocks. Think about cleaning out your closet and how you either throw out items because they are worthless and something you will never use, or keeping items because they are important and offer value for future purposes. Well, today I'm going to identify five trash stocks and why I would throw these out of my portfolio if they were in it. So what makes up trash stocks? Well, long time frames of decreasing revenue or high debt or increasing debt that is more about keeping a company afloat than investing in something that will create massive returns in the future. Also, reductions in free cash flow due to poor business performance and offering a product or service that is not going to offer much growth over the next decade or two. So let's look at our first trash stock. We're gonna get right into this and that is Walgreens, ticker WBA. This is a five-year look at its stock performance fun, right? down over 75%, yikes. Maybe if this was a roller coaster, it would be fun, but not if you have owned this stock for five years. Now, if we look at their revenue, net income, and profit margins, we'll see that the revenue has grown very slowly, those profit margins are dropping, and we see a net loss in physical year 2023. Not great. If we look at their free cash flow, we'll see it's going down, down, down. Not a great thing to see. If we look at their stock facts, I highlighted a few items. Revenue growth over the trailing 12 months has been low at 4.81%. Over the last five years, it's been a dismal 1.12%. Gross margins are low, return on equity is negative. That total debt to equity is high, though the debt to assets is okay. But look at the dividend. That yield is 9.25. This is going to attract a lot of dividend investors, but to me, this is a dividend yield trap. Look at that payout ratio, negative 53.78% a one-year growth rate of zero and a five-year growth rate of 1.76, no thank you. I think this dividend is at risk for being cut. Now, have you walked into a Walgreens lately? At least in my city, they are not happy places to be in. They look run down, employees are unhappy, and really, I have no reason to go anymore as many grocery stores are carrying everything I may need and places like Costco have a pharmacy. Not to mention the growing online pharmacy offerings where you can just get it by mail now, such as Amazon here with the pharmacists that are on call 24 seven. Very convenient and easy, and I think this type of online offering will only grow in the future. So financials to me are not looking good, and they are offering products and services that other businesses are now doing better and in more innovative ways. Yet I still see people on different social media groups that are saying they're loading up the boat on this stock because it's cheap. Yeah, cheap for a reason, and probably will get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Now, this is my first trash stock, and if I had it in my portfolio, I would be throwing it out. The next trash stock is Alibaba, ticker BABA. -A. Now, the main thing for this stock is the lack of interest from US investors due to this company being a Chinese business, but more on that after we take a quick look at some stock and financial information. So over the last five years, this stock is down 42%, not a good thing. If we look at their revenue, net income, and profit margins, we are kind of seeing a trend over the last year or two. It's kind of flattening out. Uh, we saw the revenue going up, but it's kind of slowed down. Those profit margins have declined and the net income has gone down and kind of stayed down there. If we look at their free cash flows, we'll see that they are also struggling. They kind of hit a high point in 2021 and they're struggling to get back to that point. So, so let's take a look at their stock facts. Yes, the price per earnings trailing 12 months is lower than their last five year average, and some people might see that as a value play, but I think it's a value trap. If we look at their cash flow growth over the last five years, it's been 4.31%. The revenue change over the 12 months has gone down massively compared to the last five years, and the return on equity is very low. Now, there is a bright spot, I will give them credit. The debt situation is pretty good. They also do not pay out any dividends. So it's risky, simply put, and why I never invested in this cheap Chinese version of Amazon, and I'm so glad I never did. The Chinese government has way too much control over businesses, and they have and can easily charge a large fine to businesses for virtually any reason. And they also can restrict and control a business if they feel it's getting too big. Also, it was just released that Baba ditched its plan to spin off its massive cloud business, citing uncertainty from the US limiting the exporting of advanced chips to China. Our government here in the US is taking action on limiting the tech we send for fear of misuse of artificial intelligence. So I see too many limitations with BABA that a company like Amazon does not have to face. 
This is a value play, but why it is a trash stock for me is simply due to the high risk. That is something I'm not willing to gamble with my money. It's one I would throw out. The next trash stock is Snap. Uh, Snapchat, shall we say, or ticker symbol SNAP. If we look at their last five years, we do see you know, they're up 89%, but you'll notice at the height of the advertising bonanza spending in 2020, 2021, they've crashed after that and have never recovered. They've just stayed flat. Also, if we look at their revenue, net income, and profit margins, we'll see, yes, revenue is increasing, but very slowly. Their profit margins are starting to tank, and look at that net loss is just growing. If we look at their balance sheet, the assets have kind of flattened out, but that debt to assets is going up, 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 and that is something I don't like to see, especially with a company that's struggling financially. If we look at their free cash flow, we'll look at the annual first. We'll see that most of the time their free cash flow is in the negative. I highlighted in yellow where it's at zero, anything below that is a negative free cash flow. Now they went up in 2021, but again, they've been going back down. You might say, well, that's not too bad, but if we go in and look at the quarterly, which gives us a little bit more recent data, you'll see the decline there back below that zero line, which isn't good. They're having negative free cash flow again. So we see the cash flow growth over the last five years on their stock facts is negative. The revenue percentage change over the trailing 12 months is negative 1.21. Again, this is a look at most recent data. Some of the charts we look at are yearly where they don't report the you know, like physical year 2023 yet. So it shows up to physical year 2022. Also return on equity is negative. Total debt to equity is super high. Even that debt to assets over 50%, a little too high for me. And no dividend, they don't pay that out again, which is a pattern we're kind of seeing with all these stocks, right? A lot of them don't even pay out dividends or extremely high ones. So with consistent net losses and free cash flow declines that sit their majority of the time in a negative free cash flow stance, financially this company is weak. I also think it's relatively weak as far as social media companies go, and it's highly unlikely to become a meta, a TikTok, or a YouTube. It's an app that you spend the least time on. Well, because you are really looking at a quick snap, not a 10 minute video or scrolling through a ton of content like others. If we look at these statistics, these charts, we'll see that social app revenue for Snapchat, they're down at the bottom there. I circled them and pointed out where they are. And then if we look at this chart or statistics, the social networking users by app in 2022, they are towards the bottom again. So I see a huge uphill battle that I personally think will never be won. If anything, it stays relevant, but always towards the bottom. For me, this is a trash stock and one I would not own. Now the next trash stock I'm gonna talk about is actually an industry as a whole. That's the airlines industry. So we're talking American Airlines, Delta Airlines, and United Airlines. What we're gonna focus on, I just picked one, American Airlines. If we look at the last five years, they're down 67.75%. Also, if we look at their revenue, net income, and profit margins, yes, we'll see the revenue has gone up. That's the recovery from the pandemic, but that net income has barely popped into the positive and profit margins are kind of staying flat over the last four years. If we take that into a quarterly look, some more recent data, we'll see that revenue starting to decline, the profit margins are starting to tank, and they're now at a net loss. Now, balance sheet wise, their assets are really flat and the debt to assets have remained high. And you'll see there I circled on the right 55.5%. That's pretty high in my book for a debt to assets ratio. Anything below 50 is where I want it to be. Now, free cash flow wise, this company usually operates in the negative. You'll see I circled on the left zero and below. And the yellow line is the free cash flows and their capital expenditures are going up, up, up. So not a great combination. On their stock facts, we'll see they have a very low price property and cash flow metric, and many may see that as cheap, but cheap for a reason. Again, cash flow growth over the last five years, negative 9.23%. Revenue growth over the last five years, only 3%. Gross margins are low, return on equity is negative. Debt to assets is too high for my liking, and debt to equity is thrown off due to the instability of this industry and this company. Again, does not pay dividend. We see that again with these companies. So net income struggles, and they usually make a net loss due to high capital expenditures. That's just the nature of this business. It's expensive to buy and maintain aircraft, so it's hard to grow profits. It's a more expensive way to travel, so consumer spending will be pulled back during hard times in the economy and will affect these airline stocks negatively. This is something airlines will just have to forever deal with, and that caps the stock's potential right there. Not to mention one unfortunate catastrophic event, and that puts a huge extended negative impact onto the airline's company. These are definitely trash stocks to me as they are high risk, low reward, a double negative in my book, and one I would not hold, I would throw out of my portfolio. The last trash stock is 
Peloton, ticker PTON. If we look at the past year, it's down over 50%. If we look at their revenue net income and profit margin data, we'll see that revenue's going down, they're at a net loss, and that profit margin is overall has gone down over the last four years. Their balance sheet will see the opposite X that I want to see. So we have declining assets, increasing debt to assets. You want to see the opposite. So not good. Free cash flow in the negative and their capital expenditures are remaining high. So horrible financials and performance. Yet I still see people investing in this company. Peloton has tried a lot of incentives through partnerships and promotions and nothing has worked. They have had some tragic injuries related to their workout equipment. And I stand by my claim I have made in prior videos on Peloton that working out at home is not as successful as going to a gym. A lot of Peloton equipment becomes a clothes hanger or gets put up for sale on different sites. This is expensive equipment and therefore very vulnerable to the health of the economy and customers ability to make large cash purchases, which right now we are seeing a pullback on. I do not think this is an investable company. It has struggled at almost every turn and has to compete with a very large workout and fitness industry out there. That is why it makes my list as a trash stock. So let me know if you agree with my trash stock list and what other stocks you would add to the trash stock list. Now, before I go, a benefit to being a part of this channel is that I am honest and transparent. So here's a look at my portfolio performance, something I share with every single video. If you like that type of honesty and transparency, be sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. My portfolio has improved to 12% unrealized gains. My REITs are still in the red, but I have been adding heavily to them as I feel now is the time to load up. Other than those few highlights, let me know if you have any questions about my portfolio. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and have a great day.